Today's question comes from uh, Chibi712, and uh, this is actually a really useful question for most of you. Mr. Salles, what can I do to improve time management when answering the questions? It literally took me 45 minutes to complete question two, which is a lot of time wasted. Um, and it's this subject of time wasting that I think I can really help you with. Well, first of all, there's a tiny bit of maths um, that you need to do with every exam you take, whether it's English or um, any subject. You divide the minutes that you have by the marks available. So if there are 40 marks available in 60 minutes, each mark should take um, 60 over 40 minutes, which is the equivalent of 1 minute and 30 seconds for each mark. So a 12 mark question would therefore take you 12 times one and a half minutes, which is 18 minutes. Um, and you can do that with any, um, any exam. And not only can you, you should do it before the exam. So you know exactly how long to spend on each question. Well, how should you use this time limit once you've got it? And uh, my advice to you is simple. You keep going till the fat lady sings. In other words, you keep going right until that time limit, but not beyond. And I'll explain why that's so important in a minute. Never go beyond your time limit. Always stop. Okay, you can finish a sentence, but that's all the permission that I'm giving you. Okay, you also said that you'd been time wasting. Um, and it's really interesting because you can't see yourself when you're thinking. Now, this is what students imagine that thinking looks like. Um, uh, an expression as they gaze up into the air. Maybe you're chewing on your pen. Inspiration will come to you and you start to write. Or... Inspiration doesn't come to you, but then it does, and later on you start to write. And uh, I have an expression for all the children I teach, all the students I have, and it's this. Don't think, just write. And by that, I mean, every time you do this, you're not scoring any marks. You only score with what goes on the page, and therefore you must keep writing. And what happens is magical. You might write something that's rubbish, but as you're writing, your mind will say, oh, actually, this isn't very good. What about if? And it will add something that's better. And then, obviously, you just go back and cross out the bit that was rubbish. Um, many students think that examiners will hate you for this and mark you down. No, they won't. They, they will hate you if you cross stuff out and then write over the top of it and they can't read it. But if you just simply cross something out and put in an addition further down the page, down here, um, they'll be very happy. You will be even happier because you've written something that's no longer rubbish. But let me now show you another problem with time wasting. This is a picture from the Guardian newspaper um, where they were just writing about exams generally, that nothing in it was to criticise students. But let's look closely at what our students are doing. <laughs> How many of them still have a pen that's working? That one, that one and that one, that one, that one, maybe that one. But look at all the students who are thinking in inverted commas, students who are not getting any marks. Now, this actually is typical. When I go in and watch students do a mock, this is what they imagine thinking looks like. It doesn't. You tell me what that looks like. That looks like students not doing an exam. And it's really easy to go from 10 seconds thinking to actually two minutes thinking. And two minutes thinking is actually not doing the exam. So it really is important. Don't think, just write. Now, this is the next bit of advice I have for you. Your marks are only based on what you write. You know, what's in your head scores nothing. But if you keep writing, right up until the fat lady sings, right up until the bell, right up until you're asked to put your pens down, this is what happens. Your grade depends on what everybody else does. So let's imagine your marks are 40 out of 60 or 70 out of 100. Those marks are based on the mark scheme. 
But what the exam board does is say, oh, well, we're just going to give 5% of people A stars this year. And so they just take the 5% of top marks for the A star. Or they'll say, we'll give the next 10% an A. And so it's just those 10% of people who get the A, regardless of what their marks are. Well, what does that mean? In an exam hall where everyone's doing that, you're going to shine by not doing that. You just keep writing and you'll end up here, different from everybody else. So another real reason why you must keep writing. Well, finally, I told you I'd tell you why you don't spend extra time on the question. And it's quite simple. When you uh, sit in an exam, uh, the marks for the beginning of a question are easy to get because your exam should be possible for people at the D and C grade to do. And those marks come early and they come quickly. But the marks at the end of the question for the A and the A star, they come slowly. They're really hard to get. So let's imagine to get the A star, you need an extra five marks. Well, in the first three minutes of the next question, you can easily get those five marks because anyone getting a D could get them and you want an A star, you know you're going to get them. So if time is an issue, always go on to the next question because those marks at the beginning of the next question are much easier to get. So I hope that helps you with your exam technique. And the only way to find out is to practice. Don't leave it to the real thing. If you'd like more tips on revision and uh, help with your English, you know to subscribe. Thank you.